Go back to the main. Okay. Thank you. Are you in favor? Thank you. All right. Let's deal with um, 17, Animal Control Main Street Manager contract. Would you please, Jeff, help us to understand what the idea is? So this is just a proposal. Um, the budget accounts for this. I was talking with Will about you know how we want to move forward with animal control, what we should do, and our intent was, and we've talked about this before, was to hire someone on a part-time contract that would put in so many hours a week and, and take care of that. And he said, you know, he goes, it's, is there any chance we want to look at having this full-time with some other duties? To, because then we kind of have the, that person at our discretion a little bit, we have them for other priorities. And so I know this is a bit unique, but we got talking about a Main Street manager, supervisor, and so basically the liaison position and an animal control position. Combined and combining them into a full time and just doing it as a one year temporary contract to kind of see how it would work. So the intent is obviously to deal with the animal control portion that we need in the town. Now Will will still be responsible for, uh, you know, fines or dangerous animals or anything like that. He would have to step in. But what I was thinking about, we've had a lot of discussion about Main Street lately. And this would be someone year round who would be focused on basically upkeep of Main Street and working on Main Street and cleanliness and graffiti and a number of things like that and they can really be also eyes and ears for the peace officer and the RCMP so for activities down there as well. So yeah, cleaning and sweeping out the gutters and uh, you know, pressure washing the dumpsters and the alleys and really just taking over a maintenance role on the Main Street. I think, so on the pro side of it, I see it as it could be perceived as a really goodwill piece for those Main Street merchants. That we've got someone focused on making Main Street look good and clean, and they're still acting as a town representative, and if they see things with vagrants or they see things with panhandling, my intent is they would still develop a bit of a rapport with these people on Main Street. They would still get to know them. They would introduce themselves. These people would know what their role is and know that this person is to phone the RCMP or phone the peace officer and that they're on Main Street almost every day for so a few a hours a day. <coughs> a present from the town on Main Street. Well, and I don't know, we have a couple of options. We can make them a bylaw officer, so they're not a peace officer, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have any provincial act enforcement mm -hmm. capabilities, but they can enforce local bylaws. So we could make them a bylaw officer, or we could just have them in basically stripes and a town shirt, showing they're from the town of Cardston, they're highly visible, and they're working as, you know, doing maintenance and cleaning and stuff like that as well. So that detail, I don't know exactly for sure. I guess I just wanted to, the, the trade-off here is that we don't have that traditional liaison position as we've had it on Main Street, so it's expanding that responsibility quite a bit. Um, and I don't want to talk publicly about the implications for individuals here, but we would put it out for application by anybody who might be interested and we would interview for this position. Mm -hmm. So it's the same dollars that we've already got put aside in both of those areas. Um, we just think it may be a higher exposure position and it, it's something where that attention could be on Main Street all year as opposed to just in those summer months. So in the winter they can be shoveling in front of the card home, shoveling the bridge, doing you know some of those maintenance things we do on Main Street anyway. Yeah. And plus they're always that eyes and ears on Main Street and working with the RCMP and the peace officer. So I throw it out there for some feedback. <coughs> yeah, I, as, I, as I read that, you know, I get it. I get the idea, and I think it's good. the only the only concern I had is that when you, you you're combining you know the animal control and Main Street manager, and I see in my mind I see two different totally different skill sets. Oh, and, right. and if you can find those two skill sets in the same individual, <coughs> yes, you know more more power to you. <laughs> you know, go for it. But that 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 was my only concern is that you're looking at you're looking at some fairly unique different skill sets. Is you know. <coughs> You know, to, to combine into one person, and I, it might be hard to find, but if you can. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, from a budget <coughs> perspective, two, two part-time positions, uh, less expensive than one full-time position. Well, in this well, case, it wouldn't be. Not. But it no. wouldn't be. It yeah. would be a contract. Yeah, yeah in this case, we so tried on a one-year contractual basis. It's a contract, therefore yeah. it doesn't have any implication with benefits. Yeah. <coughs> so my thoughts on this is, uh, I think this would have huge positive impact from our Main Street merchants. 
Yeah, I, uh, so. I think that's where we've probably seen the biggest positive response from. Um, there's lots of people in town that question how effective our animal control is anyways, just because the really problem dogs will use as an example, pretty tough to get them off of the streets anyways. Um, I don't see any real downsides to it. As long, I, I would, I would question whether we'd want to have that person actually be a bylaw officer. Um, I think it would make it difficult to enforce, to be a bylaw enforcement officer and be the guy that's cleaning up the gutters. Yeah, so then we're going to work together. So I, that, I don't know if that would work together really well, but I, I like the, the idea there. I think that's... Worker from the town, yeah. yeah. Councilor Bengbert, did you have yeah. a uh, Jeff, do we have enough things through the winter and basically through the summer that our public works department, all their personnel are busy? Or could, or no, no question in the summer. That doesn't concern me at all. Um, but in the winter, and, well, and yeah. we got another, we got another one coming on to the electrical situation. Does that person have to be used in that position, or could he be used in this position? Uh, the the well, uh, discrepancy, <laughs> yeah. the discrepancy salary wise is huge. So to your point, could we have public works or <coughs> electrician works guys performing that function, especially in the winter months? Yeah. Um, probably. Because I, I, see, I see some expenses there. Uh, we've got another, another vehicle. Uh, we've got some uniform mm -hmm. uh, or whatever they want, but we're going to have to have some uniform, some type of a vehicle. So there's some expenses there, um, some supervision costs. You know, I'm, I'm sure that our peace officer will will. Yeah, it was the, in, the intent we talked about was Will would basically supervise the position would be the intent too. Yeah. I'm just wondering if there's somebody in the public works that could do this job, and then maybe look at a summer student. In the summertime, you know, if we get a step program or something like that, well, I, I don't know. I just we already hire a seasonal position status quo. That would be our mm -hmm. what we've done historically, and that can certainly continue. Councillor Holmes, uh, um, I I don't I, I don't see a problem making the person a peace officer, peace you mean or bylaw yes. bylaw officer yes. because. Dog infractions are bylaw infractions anyway, and so I, I didn't have a, a, a problem with with that. Uh, and I, I I do see maybe a little issue with with maybe an ego. <laughs> a person has is a bylaw officer, and he's being a, a cleanup guy as well. You know, snow removal, and, and he's cleaning the, the leaves and the dirt and the junk and emptying the garbage bins and. Assume all that it would be part of it, and um, I, maybe there's enough hungry guys out there that would be willing to do that. But I, I don't know. I, I but guess that would be known going in. We wouldn't be spring that in, on exactly. them after the fact. I, I, yeah. Yeah. If, I mean, I, I, I look at myself. If, if, if I was a young man looking for a job and I come up, I have no problem with going catching dogs and digging snow and all that kind of stuff when I'm younger. I don't have a problem with that. So I, I, I can't see that there's a problem with this position other than, you know, maybe, you know, you're going to have to be um, able to liaison on the street. You, you can't be a bully on the street when it comes to the vagrant thing. You're going to be, you're going to have to be. You know, there's an education her. piece that needs to happen. Yeah. Anyway, I don't have a problem with this. I, 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 I like the idea personally. What, what I could see the value of having the same person in a summer and a winter is that the merchants then can rely on someone yeah. that is known. And, yeah, and they can trust that person knowing that that person will be used yeah. with all the RCMP or the with officer. our peace officer. And that some follow up will happen pretty, pretty quick. I kind of like that idea of that person. 
one person for yeah. that purpose. Now, the other thing that jumps out at me as a pro is that, uh, you know, the good relations that our, you know, liaison creates, you know, that, and that, that, that relationship um, can carry over into some of the animal control problems that we have coming across first. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't know what our current policies are when, when we catch animals from, from across first. Do we return them to their homes if we know where they're from? We just mm -hmm. put them in the pound and we deal with them that they way. They can come claim them. They can come and claim they them. they pay the fine. Right. Yeah. Or we just put them through the process. Or they get adopted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, you know, so that there's, there's a pro for me there. So my, just, just for clarification, so what we're saying is we've already got this budgeted Yes. We're just combining the two budgets. Yeah. So we always have our liaison position. position budgeted. We have for a number of years. And then this year we budgeted an additional, I think, 25.5 I had in there, or 25.4 mm -hmm. animal control. Right. Yeah. Um, the intent at the time when we talked about hiring a level one peace officer is that they wouldn't focus on, they would do the, the regulatory, the fining stuff, the penalty yeah. piece of animal control. But they wouldn't be setting traps and checking traps and doing right. that. We would find someone in the community to do that. So we've had that in the budget since the very beginning. So this is not adding anything to the bottom line. And yeah, it's it's very unique, Councilor Creed. I agree 100% with, it's gonna take an interesting combination of skills. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a very humble person to be able to juggle all those hats. Yeah, we look at it, you know, if they're working with the peace officer, morning to remove it and it's going to cost you $150 and that's what they do they show up Wednesday morning and they paint it we bill them $150 you know we have someone that can really follow up with that stuff right. in those problem areas on Main Street mm -hmm. but right now that stuff does fall through the cracks yeah. of it yeah. you know we ask them to do it we ask them to do it it doesn't happen we ask them some more yeah this way that person can really be quite regimented with even snow removal on Main Street yeah. you know if we have empty buildings you're not coming, here's your walk if you don't do it I'll be down to do it we'll send you the bill the same thing with the, the washing of the window in the summer of those empty stores. I mean, if somebody could maintain that at a fee to the mm -hmm. owner, but be done, I would appreciate that because yeah. honestly, we don't need to look at those filthy buildings. So I see a few bylaw enforcement helps for Will is on that as well. Yeah. That they can be there to say, yeah, I'm on Main Street Wednesday morning, so I'm going to go paint it. And may not be the color you want, but I'm going to go paint it. It's going to cost All right. I heard from uh, most of you, except Councillor Edmonds and Councillor Balfour. Do you want to add something? Well, I've already said something. Already you said had something. My, my You're feeling Give good. me a tranquilizer you got, and I'll take over the animal kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Councillor Edmonds. It's a lot easier than chasing them. Yeah, right. I, I, I'm with you on that. You're looking for a part time job? Or? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so if you are. Uh, Supporting that position, which does not add a dollar to our budget as an expense, it's already there and always was where from, from the beginning. I'm looking for a motion. Councilor yeah, Bounds? I'm, I'm ready to make a motion to approve the uh, temporary one year contract position. A trial basis for animal control and um, and Main Street uh, maintenance per uh -huh. All right. So, any other questions? Uh, just minor thought here. Maybe maybe don't phrase it Main Street manager. I, I, yeah, I, I'm not I'm quite sure where I'm at with that. Right. I agree. I know there's I some members of our business said. community who aren't on Main Street that might be like, yeah, hey, we're going to say Main Street down, downtown, downtown coordinator. Downtown. That's a better idea, downtown coordinator. Downtown liaison. Something. Yeah. Capture the whole thing. I don't know. Yeah. You know. yeah. I like that. Okay, all right. Friendly so, Thank you. Thank you. So, all in favor? Thank you. I think that will be a very good move for the town yeah. and for the merchants. <laughs> If for the whole town, for whole feeling, I think it's going to do a lot of good. So, you know, just, if you can't find the one person that can do both, <laughs> yeah. we, can we still? We, oh, of course, we'll still yeah. go with. We can still do. I'll, I'll keep you posted on. Yeah, that. yeah for sure. <laughs>
Yeah, I hear you. And Dave can be right. the other. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you're trying to try to less than 25,000. I can't <laughs> hire him for until after the election. That's yeah. the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe next contract. <laughs> I think he was implying he volunteered for 10 months. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right. On the 8A, we had the October 2016 financials. Any question regarding those? If there are no questions, we need a motion to approve the Councillor. I'll move to approve the financial statements. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. That was the first one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> nine. Uh, you have committee and other reports. Peace officer, animal oh, control. Do we do both balance and income statement all in one? Well, yeah. it's all yeah, part of the financial statement. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's all part of the financials. I looked at it before. The only one question I had, I just was curious, how how come how did the campground exactly come out exactly on budget? Was that is that they, just the way it works? No, there there's a method to that. <laughs> they have a cap that we share up to. So that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, so that's kind of what I thought. They keep the difference. Yeah. They keep and then, so, remember, so we're guaranteed that amount. Yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah, that's well, was we're something guaranteed in so much as they reach that. Yeah. yeah. Right. So. Yeah, and then after that, it's theirs. So. Yeah, that's what I thought. We're just that good at budgeting. <laughs> <laughs> that was past. We did that. Yeah, I, I kind of remember, I kind remember, remember that. that. Yeah. I just was trying to clarify that. Moment. Yeah, Jeff had brought that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mayor, if I could, I want to mention something on the peace officer report, just for your information. You'll see on the first page, that's Lloyd's traditional report. Yes. Um, the second I just grabbed quickly, this is, we're using a new software for peace officers so that they track what they're up to. And this is what the reports are going to start looking like. So it gives you the type of citation and how many of each of those they've enforced. Right. And then it summarizes it at the end of the number of citations, fines collected, balance, all that stuff. So. Um, that's what the, the software he's using is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And so your reports might change a little bit going forward. Okay. Which, is, which is fine. I like it. So that's why you saw an odd looking report. In yeah, so it was kind of I thought that was because of the, the level one peace officer yeah. coming in. Yeah, so that's what you're going to see because of... It's what it is. Right. Because of well, that's not an actual report because he has a... This, this, this was so far. We printed it kind of okay, right after that date. So we yeah. actually have not issued that many citations? Yes. And yeah. Oh, okay. uh, he has been a, a busy man. Yeah. That was fines only represent three fines, by the way. Yeah. 13 citations. You know something? Fines, I, I appreciate the way so our peace officer is working. No insurance expired there are some people who could, could have received very hefty fines. They got warnings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really think as people start to realize we have a no-nonsense person that will catch them. Maybe they will slow down when they need to. So 930 bucks in fines issued. Three, three fines. They haven't seen... <laughs> they haven't quite... Do the math on that for a minute. No one says found three, 13 offenses. And they weren't all fines. They weren't all fines. They weren't all fines. Three fines. Three fines. Oh, and one thing I should mention too is you'll see that on there, but that doesn't mean we're going to get that revenue because if they're all under provincial statutes, the they pay them at the court. Mm -hmm. And if they don't pay, they simply have a warrant and that whole process. So there's going to be a large percentage of these that won't ever be paid. I see. Mm -hmm. They're just going to go to warrant because they won't pay in time and then they're going to spend a night in jail. Sandwich and, lunch. Yeah, that's right. They'll go to court, get a lunch, and they won't <laughs> pay it. So, a lot of these are provincial statute, and we don't take that revenue directly. Mm -hmm. The provinces give it back to us if it's paid. Yeah, if it's paid. Okay. So, what does it cost you some legal fees, roughly? If they're provincial statutes, none, nothing. The none to us. Them. None to us. Yeah. That's the only good thing. Yeah. Okay. Ten questions. No questions. No questions. 11, correspondence. All right, here you can see from uh, David James, the Alberta Energy, they're requesting feedback on the RO cap. I really oh, thought that Kevin could be the one that could maybe provide feedback on that. 
I don't think we at council can figure it out. And I think we have Kevin, so maybe we should direct administration by way of motion to forward this to Kevin for, for a feedback. So if somebody wants to put a motion forward to direct administration, I would appreciate that. Also, I believe that we, we direct administration to uh, contact Kevin. Contact Kevin. Uh, requesting uh, feedback. Yeah, requesting feedback. On our old cabin. Right. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. All right. B is an interesting uh, item. I suggest you read it carefully. It's regarding the MG amendments. Some of them you will see have followed the recommendation of the UMA, some haven't. And uh, you can decide for yourself. But those are the ones who are law at this point. Okay? 11C. It's good to see we'll have good, strong ministers. Yeah. This is yeah. <laughs> yes. 11C, Employment and Social Development Canada. Some, uh, those are solici soliciting a submission for volunteer awards. I don't know, maybe FCSS has some knowledge of that. Maybe they could bring it to their board, Jeff, okay. possibly. 11D, Old Man Watershed Council. Thank you, Letter, for our participation in their program mm -hmm. and our donation. And 11E, Albert Alberta Office of Traffic Safety. We received a grant to purchase a new sentry. So that's good. So it doesn't come out of our pocket. It's always How good. much do they cost? Eight, eight grand? Uh, for two. No. That's for two. And we already bought them, right? They're yeah. Money spent, they're here, they're here. Yeah. We got the grant, that's good. Baseball so. Very good. And that is it. Yeah. FCM, FCM. A FCM. 11F. 11F. FCM. Yeah, if they want anybody to join me here. Our community oh, or community leadership. Yeah. Community leader for the one fifty. I, I didn't have it on my paper oh, here, oh, so okay. yeah. can you help oh, me a little bit? Right? Yeah. They're, oh. they're asking about uh, community leaders, and, and they're at, I guess they're asking if communities will appoint, can appoint uh, people Someone to, to, represent, the to town? represent the town, I think. Uh, at FCM? Yeah. Um, well, this is, it looks like it's just you know something to do with kind of celebrating Canada's 150th uh, anniversary. Yeah. It's like an ad hoc community leader for one year and mm -hmm. our parade marshal for the 150 celebration. What, what do you make out of that, uh, Jeff? I don't have the paper there in front of me. No, that's um, okay. Just I think Wendy Creed is free. <laughs> <laughs> It's something apparently when they sent me a letter back in September I didn't think a whole lot of because I didn't remember getting it, but they sent me a reminder here in December. Uh, you know, I, it's not something I know a ton about. They're putting a 150 network together and they're looking for municipalities to nominate people. My biggest concern is where are you meeting? Like Ottawa or? <laughs> well, it well, says no just... travel involved, so it looks oh, like okay, it's going to be online. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Do you remember that fellow that was at our meeting? Uh, that was so interested in doing something for the 150th downtown. But if you consider him a community leader, then he would be eligible for this. Well, if he's, I don't know. If I may, just on this note, uh, Pincher Creek, Creek. Pincher, is that right? Yeah. Uh, they received a pretty chunk, uh, pretty hefty chunk of the Canada 150 grant uh, related to their proximity to Waterton. And they said, Hey, if you're going to have a lot of people come through to visit for free, because of course this year it's all free park access. So they're expecting, hey, whatever you normally get, double that for the free year, you know, type thing. And Pinter said, we can't handle that kind of traffic. So they ended up getting uh, Canada 150 grant money for Canada's smallest municipality to have public transportation. And they are putting in a public transportation system in Pinter. And, uh, and they, uh, 
They said the right words, right? And they got the grant. So I'm just saying that they're expecting a bunch of traffic to go through there. They're going to catch, in fact, all the traffic that's coming to Washington this year. Or the next club. And, uh, well, that's what I said. I said, well, what the? I'm big enough to be to get this public transportation. No, I'm, I'm not thinking public transportation is the way to go, but. No, no, um, no, but I mean, there, there is something, you know, all thought about. There is something not so foolish about the idea, okay? Look how many seniors we have that have no transportation mm -hmm. and could truly benefit from having a shuttle to Waterton and back. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not so foolish. If somebody wants to write such a grant, I would applaud them. Well, they're, they're, I think their approach was, we're going to try to keep as many cars out of Waterton as we can by having them park and stay in Pincher and our hotels and our Walmart and then we'll take them in ourselves and, of course, run around. What kind of grant did they get? Uh, it's, a, it's the federal, it's the federal money it's a, it's Canada oh, 150. It was, it was a big one. At, at well, it Alberta Southwest, they, they got the biggest grant of the 150s that were in the room. And uh, then the other half of us were like, you got 150 money? Anyway, so it's all, oh, no, no, but I Crow's Nest Pass is getting beautiful swimming pool slide. <laughs> it's a doozy, 150 foot. Anyway. Um, so that's where the 150 money went, if you're curious. It's all well, We can always revamp our fairies fountain with that mm -hmm. amount of money. Right. Right. And that wouldn't be a bad thing either. So, but my point was, just uh, on the discussion point here, is that maybe we should be looking at maybe attracting some of that traffic to come through Cardston on the 150. Maybe we should have a little ad hoc uh, committee. We're talking about, about this, talk about that too. right? I and mean, we're coming up on it because the 150th starts in three weeks, right? I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Councilor Peavoris, you sound so interested. Do you want to do something? <laughs> I'm not sure. Me, <laughs> but I mean, I can. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy. happy to, uh, this kind of goes along with our, our <laughs> collaboration idea that we had before. Let's see what, what what can we do for Carston and get get a little. Okay, you know, no, but and no, I, I'm not joking. Uh, would you be interested to try to find? Some citizens that would work with you. There was somebody in the so audience. Will be flying the other into day. Ottawa. <laughs> no, no. I think it's all online. I'll uh, I'll click this link and go see what filling out the application looks like. I'm happy to let my name stand. Okay, stands. all right. Well, you try yeah, that. Okay. Uh, I'm just wondering if we. But I'm more interested little, for uh, Calston. What are we going to do for Calston? Right. No, exactly. And that that's why I'm wondering. Do we need maybe a small motion? If so, I'm happy to make it to direct administration to support the initiative of a small 150 community committee yeah. idea. Okay, uh, sure. Something like that. Okay. If so, I'll make that motion. All right, so, so you made the motion. To help so me out. Can you? Uh, <laughs> okay. So that All right, sound like. <laughs> okay, yeah. now uh, what? We can print that, Jeff, do you remember the name of that citizen that was there, that was... Was it Bill Hill? Was, I don't yeah, know, maybe was. that's who it was. Wasn't it Steve? Because... Well, no. well, I mean, what, you mean when we had our open house? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bill oh, Bill, Bill Hill, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. he was really interested. So you may you may want yeah. to yeah. have yeah. an yeah. open yeah. yeah. Okay? Oh. So are we, we don't have think, Chautauqua this year, so I got nothing going on. No, but you know something, <laughs> if you can do something with that, you enjoy it, so go ahead. Maybe you could get some money to improve the parking and cards in for large vehicles. Of course. Count on 150, so you don't have any spare money. Okay, well, you, you see if there's some money left and then we can get something. Okay. What else? Yeah. Thanks, We're morning. done. Uh, I move to go in camera. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. All right.